Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to show you how to find the charge on each of the three capacitors and also the current uh, through the circuit here, through the resistors. All right, how do we go about doing that? Well, we have a 100 volt uh, voltage source right here, positive and negative. So we know that the current will be flowing in this direction. And initially, when we first connect the whole circuit, the capacitor will fill full of charge. You'll have positive charge on this side of the capacitors and negative charge on the other side of the capacitors and that will continue until the capacitor is filled with charge at that point the current will continue to flow through the outside resistors and no current will flow through the capacitors so at that point the capacitors are fully charged what we need to find out now is what the potential difference is across each across each of the three capacitors so to do that, we have to imagine now that all the current is going to be flowing through the outside circuit right here. And if we count all the resistors, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 resistors, 10 times 10 ohms, that's 100 ohms. So we have 100 volts and 100 ohms in the circuit. So from that, using Ohm's law, we can say that the current is going to be equal to the voltage across the circuit divided by the total resistance. In this case, that's 100 volts divided by 10 times 10 ohms. And of course, 100 divided by 100 would be 1 amp, which means we have 1 amp of current flowing through the circuit. The next thing we want to do is to try and fi figure out what the potential drop is across each resistor. And of course, we know that I equals V over R. So this equals V over R, which means that the potential difference across each resistor is going to be I times R. Again, that's from Ohm's law. So we can see that we have 1 amp of current 10 ohms of resistance, that means there's a 10 volt drop across each resistor. So every time we go across the resistor, the voltage will drop by 10 volts, which means if we start at 100 volts at this end, across one resistor, this would be 90 volts, this is going to be 80 volts, 70 volts, here this would be 60 volts, 50 volts, 40 volts, 30 volts, 20 volts, 10 volts and then across this resistor back to 0 volts and then the battery will then increase that back to 100 volts and around we go. So now we notice that the potential difference between the first capacitor is 90 minus 20 or 70 volts. Here the potential difference is 80 minus 30 which is 50 volts and here the potential difference is 70 minus 40 or 30 volts across that. Now using the equations of capacitance we know that the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage that pushes that charge on there. That's not a very good looking V here, let me try it again. There we go. Which means that the charge on the capacitor is simply equal to the product of the capacitance times the voltage. So in the case of the first capacitor, let's call this one C1, let's call this one C2, let's call this one C3, we can then say that C1 for that capacitor, the charge Q1 is equal to C1 times the voltage across that capacitor, let's call it V1. So in this case, the capacitance would be 7 microfarads, and the voltage across that would be 90 minus 20 or 70 volts, that would be 490 microcoulombs. So that's the charge on the first capacitor. On C2, we can say that Q2 is equal to C2 times V2. C2, the capacitance is 5 microfarads and the voltage difference will be 80 minus 30 which is 50 volts which means there will be 250 microcoulombs of charge on the second capacitor on the third capacitor C3 we can say that Q3 is equal to C3 times V3 and the capacitance is 3 microfarads and the voltage across this one is 70 minus 40 which is 30 volts and that would be 90 microcoulombs so that would be the charge on each of the three capacitors at steady state of course not while they're charging but when they're fully charged that will be the charge on each of the three capacitors and the current through the entire circuit would be one ohm uh, one amp which is 100 volts divided by the total resistance of 100 ohms and so through the battery and through each of the resistors you'll have a current of one amp and that's how we figure that out.